Hi, it's Eamon here from uh, No One Likes Us Talking. We've got a very special guest tonight, a member of the 2001-2000 uh, team, saying it backwards, who attended the den along with a number of his colleagues last Saturday as part of the Millwall Dockers Day celebration. Uh, I think he got the biggest shout when uh, he came out on the pitch. There was a lot of people roaring, as they do at the den. And it is, of course... A former Millwall and Republic of Ireland international, Richie Sadlier. Richie. Hey, man, how you doing? Well, not too bad, not too Thanks bad. You had a good day Saturday. Oh, I loved it. Uh, I really did. Like We, we were told that, uh, that you know, to, to Mark Docker's day, we were going to have a, a bit of a reunion of the team. I think it was all sparked from kind of Timmy joining the club again. And obviously Chopper and Livers are there. So they figured, oh, well, that's three of the team there already. That just someone got the idea to bring the rest of us back in. A good few showed up, like Maddie Lawrence, Christoph Warner was there, Robbie Bully, um, myself, and it was it was just great catching up with. As soon as we got there, like some of those lads I haven't seen in 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 a long, long time. Uh, Matt Lawrence came back from America, um, and straight away, straight away, we were just all kind of talking about the the, the old times, the games, the memories, and then we all walked into the dressing room together and. Just immediately when you walk into that room, you just look at around and go, Christ, the amount of memories we have in this room, the amount of things that were said and done in this room, and, and all it all came flooding back. And then we kind of walked upstairs, and they kind of someone put a load of kind of displays of a lot of photos of us all back in the day, and um, we looked a lot younger than we do now. But uh, huh. it was uh, it was great. It was great. It was good for you. The staff, obviously, from, from our time there working at the club, are still there. I got to catch up with all of them. And, Love we were asked to go out to the, the the bus the bus thing that parked in the car park and we just got to meet a load of fans out there and, and everyone was great because sometimes actually when you're a Millwall player at, like an active player at the club sometimes not every fan you meet will be positive to you <laughs> certainly that was my experience you, you're kind of you're at the mercy of whatever form you're in at that time or whether you're playing well or you're, you're winning games but um, obviously everyone was just being really sound and nice to us and all that so it was great well um it was great to see you all. I think Mark McGee was he there? McGee was there as well, yeah. Yeah, and that was yeah. great. I think that that added a load to it because there has been times over the years where I've gone back to play like charity games or you meet up with some of the lads, uh, be in touch with Robbie and, and a few of them. We're all on a WhatsApp group still, anyway. So there's a lot of communication between us all, even though we're in all different countries. Like Warner's over in India, yeah. Matt Lawrence in America. Um, the lads are all dotted around coaching at different clubs as well so we're all in contact with each other more or less every, like all the time this WhatsApp group is, 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 is hopping really but um, when when Mark showed up as well even actually calling him Mark I've never referred to him as Mark he's always gaffer then to meet him and say oh, how are you Mark <laughs> that, was, that was a new thing as well and we're just chatting about the old days and, and various different things it was great it was great to see him there's some nice pictures on the uh, Millwall website um and there's a couple of pictures of you with uh, with Timmy Cahill, and I can remember just before uh, he signed for us, you were egging him on on Twitter. Come on, Tim, about yeah. time you signed. Yeah, get the damn thing signed. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it was great. Like it's, it's an amazing story, really. Like when he first came to the club, he, he was he was put in the digs with me and uh, Phil Smith. Actually, at the time, was the youth team goalkeeper. Phil went yeah. out to play for the first team a few times as well, and Timmy was uh, he was. I shared a bedroom with him initially and like we were kids we didn't have a clue what we were doing like he'd just come from Australia I was over from Dublin like the, the whole world of professional football and Millwall was just just this big exciting adventure to us and of course when you're 18 or 70 you don't know whether you're going to make it to 19 mm -hmm. you know whether you'll be there when you're 20 because the cut out like the the amount of players you're in a youth team squad there's 20 of them you know about four years are maybe going to get a contract and maybe only two of those four will get a second contract so you know the numbers are against you so you kind of try and enjoy it as much as you can but you know it's a really like the stakes are pretty high when you get to that age because you know that the huge amount you won't get to the next age so um, we did our best to enjoy it while being like under a fair bit of pressure ourselves as well and uh, now it was great it was brilliant meeting them all as well and, and even to talk to Timmy actually it was and I actually made this point to him on Saturday he was talking like a 38 year old senior professional does he was talking about like his his role within the squad and what it's like and how he contributes to to match day and what he's like around training and and I'd never seen him be that because he was the he was like, he was one of the youngsters when I was there 
so too was livers and kind of Chopper was 23, 24 I think when I finished and um, and then to hear him like obviously I've had this with Reedy as well like, like the Reedy over the years and you know Reedy's obviously gone to be a senior pro and now he's a coach so very different from where we were when we first met each other which is a good thing you're not meant to be acting like an 18 year old when you're 38 and 39 well hopefully not yeah that's uh, yeah that's yeah. reasonable but you were uh, as yeah. a group the the side that probably got as close to reaching the promised land uh as we are at this moment in time, I think. Yeah, and, and we we were all kind of talking about that because we would have been in this situation, like in, in early April, knowing the playoffs are a possibility. And if the playoffs go well, you know, those, those two, potentially three games of the playoffs, and then you're a Premier League footballer. You're a Premier League footballer with Millwall, which is which is an incredible achievement, really. So we were on the, on the cusp of it. So we were all, even watching the match on Saturday, you kind of had an idea of what it's like to be the players. And then we spoke to Chopper and, spoke to some of the staff as well and I was just kind of asking them you know what's what's the mood like are, are they are they are they nervous that they're in this position do they feel under pressure is it are they overawed in any way like what well, what's what's it like coming into each game and, and and the answers I was getting was exactly the same as I remember it being when we were there it was just this feeling of like it didn't matter who we were playing we're gonna let's go out and do what we know we can do and let's beat them and it was that there was no real respect for any of the reputations of the big clubs that we're playing playing against or whatever their wage level were or whatever the, the, the players had been bought for or however much pressure expectation were on the opposition like there was nothing really expected of us even us back then we had just been promoted from League One at the time yeah. um, similar to the lads now so you, you're coming into this with the hope that you'll stay up really when you get promoted initially and then when you get into the division you think oh, we're more than capable of holding our own and then you get to the, the Christmas and then the Easter period and you think hang on we're, we're, we're one of the best teams in this division we're capable of beating anyone and that attitude seems to be the very same with this group now they're not, they're not going into games thinking if we lose we're going to blow it and we're going to get criticised and the manager's going to get sacked or we're going to get replaced next year I'd imagine those fears are in some of the other squads of some of the bigger clubs that are also in and around the playoff position that they you know those clubs would have started the season not with the hope of getting promoted but with the expectation and the managers would have got those jobs with the specific aim of getting promoted and if they don't get to the playoffs and they don't get promoted there's a there's an inquiry there's a, there's an inquest as to what the hell went wrong it's a real advantage actually that Millwall are in the position they're in without any of those absolutely I mean expectations. I, I read where old Bruce at Villa was saying you know his job's on the line if they don't go up and, uh, yeah. and therefore some of the players and, and they haven't got that pressure at the den they're very much no. family they fear no foe yeah. like the motto that goes with the club mm. and, and it's clear mm. to see wonderful and times and I think, I think it matters as well it, it matters as well that, and I, I think I've said this before and I didn't get this when I first joined the club we, everyone around the club seemed to put this importance on this phrase you know, he's, a, he's a Millwall player or he's a Millwall he, he's, he's Millwall and I think, what the hell does that mean? Like, surely if you're a good player, you're a good player. If you're a good manager, you're a good manager. It doesn't matter if you have any link or anything to the club. And the longer I was there, I kind of realised why people say that and why it is so important to have some kind of link or understanding of the of what the club is all about. And you have a manager there who is like you, who is all of that. And you have assistant manager like Livers who is all of that. And even Timmy coming back, a senior player who absolutely knows what the club is about. Um, and all the players as well obviously have, have taken on board everything that, that, that the club is about even watching that performance on Saturday yeah, it was it was exactly how I remember we did it you just it was you know the two banks of four you have two lads up front the work rate is huge mm-hmm. um, the, the, the focus and the concentration and doing all the things that you'd, you'd expect a no all player to do like no one was no one was cheating, no one was not going with the runners or no one was not closing down the nearest man or no one was not going for the tackle that needed to be gone for. Like They all did yeah. what is sometimes dismissively called the basics, but they're the essential stuff. Yeah, and some people forget that. I, you, you watch sides and you think, well, really, how are they where they are? I mean, Bristol themselves on Saturday, supposed to be a great passing mm. team. But they kept kicking the ball up in the air. They didn't live up to the reputation that they had. So, um, what do you think? Are we in with that chant? Are our team playing at 
the level that needs to be to get into those playoffs? Absolutely. I know, like, I know the fixtures coming up are against a lot of the teams that are, are around now all at the moment, so, so the difficult fixtures, but the advantage of that is like it's it's in our hands. Yeah. We're, you know, we're not playing against all the bottom teams and you know, if we beat them all it doesn't matter because all the top teams are gonna win. Like if we if we win it we we have it in our own hands to get into in into the top six, uh, which is a really fortunate position. Um the confidence that must be in that squad, the the momentum that they've built up. It's been so long since the team has beaten them. Um like that those things matter massively. Like they're not going into like tomorrow night's game or the games at the weekend with with, with questions over them. Uh, you know. No. Is the manager good enough, or, or do the players have the bottle, or you know, should, you know, did we make the right signings, or you know, are these players, you know, failing to live up to their reputation? All the stuff that's going to be in all the other squads of all the other clubs, um, and again, that thing of that that threat, that fear of if we don't make this, you know, we could be out the door. None of those things are are are, are, are here in our position. So if you're asking like. Are, are, are we good enough to do it or can we do it the answer is absolutely of course we can but you're looking at the those those kind of extra things the indefinable things the, the things like confidence and momentum and, and pressure and the personalities of the players and the expectations and all of those things all of those areas we're, we're, we're flying in no it's it's uh, really good to see that I just want to mm. talk about I'm a, you left us sadly um through injury um, mm. for me you were one of the most promising prospects since I watched Teddy Sheridan I think and uh, oh. it was a sad time so what have you done since briefly I think we know little bits but summarise it yeah I, so, so I, I've a lo- I do a load of different things on a part time basis I, I've, a, I've a contract with the, the RTE television over here so I do punditry on the international football and the Champions League and the, the, the domestic football the League of Ireland and I write a column in sport and uh, for the Irish Times newspaper I present a podcast where I interview um, a sports person for sit down for an hour um, but I also have gotten into the area of mental health I'm a psychotherapist as well yeah. so I work with teenagers and their parents um, and I teach in a school around the whole area of mental health and and sexual health as well so kind of sex education spin on it as well so I'm really really my my working week is as varied as it can possibly be so um, I love doing all the things I do I'm probably doing too many things I wish I had a little bit more free time <laughs> um, to things like to go over to Millwall and watch them um, just, and just all the other things that you would do if you had free time I, I'd like to get a scenario where I have a bit more free time but I'm lucky in that I do so many things that I really really love well, we hope we can see you at the uh, den in the future. You really made uh, a great day for many people because, as I said, the roar that went up when they called you out was quite exceptional. I'm sorry I uh, I couldn't live up to that other Raymond. Well, you have uh, some chap called Brady. He, his brothers, Ray and Pat, used to play for Millwall too. Mm-hmm. That's it, Liam Brady. And on the other side is that other Millwall, old Millwall player, Eamon Dumphy uh, you make a great yeah. trio on the uh, RTE's version of Saturday night's Gary Lineker show here in the UK um, it must be fantastic mm. to be there but what a group of people who've got all those Millwall connections I, I, I thoroughly enjoy watching that when I'm over in Ireland must be a fantastic yeah, it's a lot of fun. yeah it's a lot of fun to be like in a live show like that um, first of all you're watching football which is it's, it's kind of ridiculous that someone would pay you to do that um, and then and then just to be able to just talk as freely as we're allowed to do on RT television um, just to give our opinions on whatever we want if people disagree on things they you know allow us encourage us to disagree it's it's the way you would talk to, to, to your mates after a match is, is how we try to be as as normal or as as open as that with our views of a match after we watch it, so it's a it's the hell of a job, it's a hell of a buzz to be to be on live television after a match with particularly with those lads you mentioned. Yeah, it's a great little team. I, I look forward to seeing you on it again in, in not too distant future. Anyhow, Richie, lovely to see you. We hope we see you back at the Den again in the not too distant future. And uh, thanks very much for being with us and that's me Eamon and that's bye from me and it's bye from Richie he's there somewhere thanks a lot ok thanks a lot we'll Cheers. talk thanks again one day all the best now Cheers, thanks